your news. This is 69 News Weekend Edition, live at 6. We have our eye on Irene as she inches closer. We're starting to feel Irene's wrath as conditions are beginning to deteriorate. The storm is charging up the eastern seaboard with wind gusts as high as 115 miles per hour. Hurricane Irene's center is massive, being an estimated 500 miles wide. Its reach goes from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, to just below Cape Cod. And for us, the worst is yet to come. Just hours ago, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett says he He's concerned about Lehigh Valley residents not being prepared enough. WFMZ meteorologist Matt Broderick has been tracking this storm for us, and he has the latest. Matt. All right, Karen, thanks very much. Yeah, certainly I uh, want to be prepared for this. Even though we have not seen uh, that weather that bad yet, it is starting to deteriorate, certainly starting to see at least somewhat heavier rain at times move on into the area. And this is going to be a pretty rough stretch of weather from this evening, especially a little bit later, right through at least the middle of tomorrow before things start to improve. The rain will end before the winds slacken tomorrow. That is also one thing to know. Looks good here as far as what we're dealing with on our select warn system. The center of circulation here still well to the south of us, but this look how slow this storm is moving right now. Now it will pick up pace eventually, but spreading all of these rain bands right up and into our area. And you can see all of this rain. This still has to come through the area. So we still expect in our region to see four to six or four to eight inches of rain with locally higher amounts. I still think there can be amounts that are greater than eight inches in parts of the region. Everybody with the flood watch, there are now flood warnings in effect. Some of us have the tropical storm warnings you can see here on the key. There's just a lot going on. Now the flood warnings across the Lehigh Valley are for the Delaware, certainly for parts of Berks and Schuylkill counties. The Schuylkill River, we expect both of those rivers to go over their bankfuls in some locations, not everywhere, but Easton is one of those locations as far as the Delaware goes. We're going to start to make these graphics for you, but we, we expect the Delaware to go over its bankfuls by some point tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening and then not go below bankful or flood stage until we reach later on Monday. So if you live along the Delaware near Easton and in some other locations, we are going to see that river go over quickly here as far as rain one to three in the western parts of the area Schuylkill Western Berks and then out toward Harrisburg most of us will fall between four to six inches here in the Lehigh Valley and then into western New Jersey with locally higher amounts and then eight inches plus as far as rain farther east of course you have the rain the wind the saturated ground and we're very concerned of trees coming down with power lines and power outages many more details to come in a few minutes for now we'll send things back over to Karen a lot to watch out for thank you Matt and as he just showed us, Irene is storming up the East Coast. We will have much more on the storm itself later. We now begin team coverage on the preparations right here in the region. WFMZ's Pan Cunningham is standing by in Berks County for us tonight. But first, Will Lewis is in Allentown with more on the search for generators. Will. Well, Karen, you know, last night some store managers told us there were no generators in the Lehigh Valley. But when the news that Cabela's in Hamburg was getting a shipment, people started lining up around 4 a.m. That's four hours before the store even opened. Hi, how are you? I just need to see your receipt. The line of cars at Cabela's in Hamburg, Berks County, were all picking up one thing generators. Most of these generators can operate your freezer, refrigerator, sump pump. Uh, I'm afraid my electric will go out, so I have a sump pump in my cellar. I got to keep going. Came out to buy it as a precaution for uh, sump pumps. Uh, any water and power, power outages so it uh, make uh, the sump pump fail and uh, have the water uh, come in the basement. Because of Hurricane Irene, Cabela's lowered the price of the generators by $180 due to public need. The local demand for generators has been crazy last three days. On Thursday and Friday, uh, we sold over 150 generators alone. Today, the store has sold 700. Four trucks came from various locations across the nation. The generators were not even put on the floor because they didn't want customers fighting over an item they couldn't find. Uh, I tried all the uh, hardware stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, etc., and uh, uh, heard that they were getting a shipment here and uh, made the run uh, hour bus drive to get here and uh, pick it up. There is none. There, there's none within 150 miles. Now that customers have generators, they need to be safe. The first concern 
breathing gas fumes inside the home. If you are going to operate them in your basement, you want to make sure you have plenty of ventilation and you have a window or doors open. Now, if you still need a generator or you're just thinking about getting one, it's too late to get one at Cabela's. The managers tell us they sold out two hours ago. Reporting live in Allentown, Will Lewis. 69 News. Good to see some folks preparing there, Will. Thank you. Now, Pam Cunningham is out at Hay Creek in Birdsboro, where flooding has been a problem in the past. Pam. Karen, that's right. Back in 1987, actually, the creek that's down the road from here flooded and wiped out the bridges on Route 82, and they were never rebuilt. Now, I just spoke with a Birdsboro police officer who actually came by, and he anticipates that the area that we're standing in right now will flood overnight. Now, Hay Creek is still within its banks right now, and... It but the rain that is coming down now and expected to come in the hours from now is a big concern. The Berks County Department of Emergency Services is saying localized small streams and urban flooding is a certainty. They're expecting three to six inches in the county. And of course, wind remain a big concern because it could be from 30 to 50 miles per hour. As for the Schuylkill River, its potential to flood has diminished. Now, I also spoke with the Birdsboro mayor, and he says that the borough is on high alert, that they're working close with county officials to monitor what's happening and to keep a finger on the pulse of what's going on. Of course, they have an emergency plan in place, and part of that plan is having fire and police officers going out and monitoring those streams and creeks. Now, of course, we'll be out here throughout the night to let you know how this rain is coming down and when that wind starts to pick up. Reporting live in Birdsboro, Pam Cunningham, 69 News. Thanks, Pam. Certainly an area to keep an eye on. Shoppers dashed to supermarkets today. Look Looking for those precious items to get through this hurricane, we visit, visited this Wegmans on Tillman Street in Allentown this afternoon. Employees there tell us they have been busy through the overnight. They say water, batteries, and flashlights all in high demand as customers brace for the storm. Well, it's sort of emergency shopping. We've been away for a week on vacation with nothing in the house. So we figured if we didn't stop here today, we weren't going to have anything to eat this weekend. Wegmans tells us they will be staying open through the storm. Easton Mayor Sal Panto met with other city leaders today to make more preparations for the storm. The city rented some light towers and fire trucks to provide temporary lighting in case of blackouts. The mayor says those residents who live in flood-prone areas have been told they should be out of their homes tonight. As you can see, Easton has had problems with flooding in the past. The mayor says residents needed to be ready. If you're waiting till you hear this, you're too late. All the flashlights are gone, all the bottles of water are gone. And the mayor has scheduled another meeting with his team for tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Kutztown University students scrambled to beat Irene. They were moving in today instead of on the scheduled move-in day, which was set for tomorrow. The university had to make some adjustments to deal with the storm. We had a number of phone calls throughout the week from worried parents from uh, around the region. Uh, we did open our residence halls a day early. They were open yesterday, and actually uh, more than 20% of our incoming freshmen came in. Officials from the university have already postponed convocation events, which were scheduled for tomorrow. Dangerous wind and rising water levels continue to threaten those in Irene's path. President Barack Obama has declared states of emergency in nine states, and hurricane warnings remain in effect as the storm's track continues along the East Coast. Correspondent Shelby Lynn has the latest on the storm's developments. Hurricane Irene has its eye on the northeast after slamming into North Carolina's coast early Saturday morning. Reports of damages are rolling in and the numbers of residents in the dark are rising. But President Obama says the federal government is prepared. It's going to be a long 72 hours uh, and obviously a lot of families are going to be affected. Uh, what we heard, uh, the biggest concern I'm, I'm having right now has to do with flooding and, uh, and, uh, and power. Uh, it sounds like that's uh, going to be uh, an enormous strain uh, on a lot of states. North Carolina continues to experience the effects of Irene's northbound trek along the East Coast, and Department of Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano urges residents to take this storm seriously. If you receive a warning to evacuate, uh, please uh, do so. Uh, it, even if you haven't received a warning uh, during the storm, uh, please stay inside. Um, quote, hunker down uh, until the storm passes, stay off the roads so the roads can be clear uh, for emergency vehicles for our first responders. 
Many in the Northeast followed evacuation orders, with New York City shutting down its transit system. Uh, we expect a strong Category 1 storm to hit us tonight with winds between 55 and 75 miles an hour. Irene is expected to roar up the East Coast Saturday night as mid-Atlantic residents take cover. Shelby Lynn, 69 News. Irene's destructive path has turned deadly. The storm has caused at least three deaths so far. Officials in Virginia say an 11-year-old boy was killed when a tree crashed into his apartment in Newport News. Another person died in Virginia when a tree fell on their car. The third death came in North Carolina, where a man was crushed by a large tree limb outside his home. To look at Hurricane Irene for you tonight and the effects here in our region. Let's go back over to Matt in the Weather Center. Matt. All right, Karen, thanks very much. Well, let's start off with wind speeds, which have been coming up just a little bit. They're not terrible yet. Again, this is not the worst part of the storm. You can see in Philly, we have a speed of 21. All of the wind, of course, as a storm comes up the coast out of the northeast or north northeast. 15 in the valley, 10 the wind in Reading, and 12 Lancaster. They're not really a factor yet for most of the area, especially the farther north you go. Some gusts, though, past 20 miles miles an hour, Reading to 21, Lehigh Valley with a 22 mile an hour wind gust. But again, this is not bad yet. We expect the wind to really pick up later this evening and then certainly through most of the day tomorrow before it begins to slacken off. And we'll show you what to expect as far as wind gusts. Good look at our select warrant system. You can see in our particular region, which we put kind of in the, on the top of the screen here, the rain just starting to come in. It is raining in a lot of the area. There have been at least a few heavy bands that have come in every now and then, and actually a couple of different thunderstorms. You can see the center of circulation right near the North Carolina and Virginia border. And this is just a lot of rain that has to come through our area. It is just pouring here at the Jersey Shore, out toward Long Island into southern New England and all of these places down into Virginia and all of this rain is coming our way. So this is why we're keeping our rainfall forecast. The biggest concern with this system for us, the ground is saturated. We've seen eight plus inches of rain already this month in some locations. We added another four to six or four to eight inches of rain with wind gusts to 30, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, whatever it may be in your particular area. And that's what we're most concerned with about trees coming down, power lines and that leading to power outages. That's one thing. The second thing, flooding is going to happen. Certainly talking about street and highway flooding is a given. Poor drainage areas, all the streams and creeks, and at least in some locations along the Delaware and along the Schuylkill. Now, right now, no major flooding expected for the most part, but some moderate flooding will occur along the Delaware and along the Schuylkill River. So that's another thing that we're keeping an eye on. Again, uh, numbers just coming in, so we'll start to make some of these maps. But if you are living along the Delaware or the Schuylkill or any other smaller stream or creek, you certainly want to be prepared to move to higher ground. We expect that to happen. For the most part, the Delaware and the Schuylkill go over flood stage at some point tomorrow during the afternoon and then don't go back below flood stage until later on Monday or Monday night. So that particular time period. Good look at it here. You can see on our uh, satellite and radar all of this rainfall now just starting to come in. Poconos haven't seen anything, but most of us just a little bit of light to moderate rain. But it is just teeming down here into parts of Jersey and over the Delmarva. We've seen flood warnings all over the place across Maryland and Delaware and South Jersey where as much as three and four inches of rain have already fallen. So there will be some amounts that you hear about upwards of 10 plus inches, maybe even 12 inches. For us, however, western parts of the area, which is Schuylkill, Western Berks, one to three inches. Most of Berks County right through the Lehigh Valley, Poconos and North Jersey, four to six inches with locally higher amounts. And then you have to go pretty far to the east, which does include the Philly area and most of central and south Jersey to get more than eight inches of rain. How about the wind gusts? Well, as you head farther to the west, not nearly as bad, 20 to 30 miles an hour. Most of us will see a 30 to 50 mile an hour wind gust, and the farther east you go, could see some of those gusts upwards of 70 miles an hour. And then, of course, along shore communities, up to about 90 miles per hour. So definitely watching a lot of things as this is just getting underway. But the worst of the storm, no question, from later this evening, and as soon as that wind picks up and that heavy rain comes in, you know we're just starting to get in to the worst of that storm, which will last through at least a portion of the day tomorrow. Windy, humid with rain heavy at times in 66. Now, we will begin to see flooding of streets and highways, poor drainage areas, and streams and creeks starting tonight later on. And then again, eventually the rivers, at least along parts of the Delaware and Schuylkill, will begin to go over by tomorrow afternoon. Very humid conditions. Tomorrow, 
74 again rain heavy at times strong winds it will start to improve after noon as far as the rain goes however we do not expect the winds to slacken off until some point sunday evening as that storm pulls away winds tomorrow about 30 to 50 miles per hour with again some of those gusts past that as far as the extended forecast cleanup efforts obviously will be needed starting on monday and it does look good for a, a good little stretch there monday through at least the middle part of next week we expect a good amount of sun any next chance of a storm wouldn't come until thursday obviously more to come after this newscast as well karen back over to you pictures for you of the rivers that Matt was mentioning. He said knowing the drill and of course folks in Easton do know the drill very well. We've been there numerous times with flooding coverage and tonight that is where we find WFMZ's Jackie Ferris. She is where the Lehigh River meets with the Delaware River in Easton tonight. Jackie. Well, good evening. I have to tell you, people in Easton right now are, are a little casual at this point. Before we came out to our live shot, we were cruising through the streets to kind of check things out, see if we could see any flooding, any problems, things like that. And people were just walking around in T-shirts and everything. Right now, we're uh, across the street from Larry Holmes' ringside, and there are a bunch of people on the uh, patio having drinks, kind of checking out the weather. A lot of people have been walking out to see what the Delaware is doing. I have to tell you, one person that is leading the charge in, in terms of being uh, concerned and being prepared is Mayor Salpanto. I talked to him not too long ago. He said that uh, reverse 911 calls have been made to all residents in the area who live in low-lying areas to tell them that they need to have a plan, that uh, these floodwaters can come up, although most of them are expected Monday and Tuesday. There could be some flooding overnight, and they need to be prepared to uh, get to higher ground. Now, the city has been pre-planning with uh, county emergency management officials, their own emergency management officials, and Easton Hospital to take care of any kind of eventuality. The last couple of days, street crews have been going out and cleaning uh, catch basins and inlets to make sure that that four to six inches of rain that we're expecting will be able to drain off easily. And uh, crews have also been out uh, putting uh, barriers in about 180 cones throughout the city because later tonight those crews are going to be hitting the streets and they're going to be making sure that the trouble spots are, are blocked off. And I have to tell you, if you see a barrier and you see some water, you need to make sure that you turn around and go the other way because you never know what's under that water. Um, a couple of years ago, I remember I covered a story here in Easton where a huge sinkhole swallowed up uh, most of a, a, a yard of a home and part of the home itself. So sinkholes are a big problem here and the water that we've had these last couple of days. You guys have seen the rain come down. It's just been miserable. The, the ground is so wet right now that just anything has happened. Anything is possible. You know, there's a big risk that uh, once the weather starts moving in and gets a little bit heavier that we're going to have uh, a lot of trees come down and we're going to have a lot of flooding. So you need to make sure that you're safe when you're on the streets because if you do go around a barrier, the emergency management personnel, the firefighters, the police officers, all of those folks that are out there trying to make sure everybody is safe, they're going to have to come and rescue you. So, you know, going around those barriers puts yourself at harm and puts them at even greater harm. We want to show you right now what's going on with the Delaware River. It is just raging at this point. Now, Mayor Salpanto says that uh, the Delaware, you know, it is a little bit of a concern. A couple of days ago, New York State did release a lot of water, but he says that the floodgates have been closed. So really the only concern with the Delaware at this point is that four to six inches of rain that we're expecting. The big concern, he says, is going to be the Lehigh because it is at a low-lying area and crews are going to be monitoring that situation, the levels and, and any kind of uh, road closures or things like that that need to be taken care of around the clock. Everybody is on the clock making sure that uh, if anything happens that it is addressed. Now I also want to tell you some things that could happen while the power could go out. Panto says what's going to happen is uh, some lights could go up, especially in the downtown area to make sure that there are no problems with traffic 
or with looting. Uh, Mayor Panto says he's going to be on the streets all night with emergency management personnel to address any kind of situation. And he's going to have a big powwow with everybody here at Easton tomorrow at 9 o'clock to uh, kind of look over what has been done and what needs to be done. Now, one thing I want to tell you, uh, if you're going to be driving around and you got to go somewhere anytime during the storm, stay away from 611. So that's, that's the tips here from uh, Easton back to you. Thanks so much. Good to see the pictures of the river there behind you. Thanks for that. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of Hurricane Irene for you tonight. We just showed you what was happening out in Easton, and now we want to get a look at Berks County for you. WFMC's Pan Cunningham is at Hay Creek in Birdsboro, also an area that is very familiar with water and flooding in that region. Pan. Hi, Karen. Yeah, like just like you said, historically this area is known for its flooding, and we did speak to a Birdsboro police officer earlier tonight, and he does expect where I'm actually standing right now to be flooded overnight. If you take a look over here on the street at the puddles, you can see that the rain is coming down. It's not coming down too hard, uh, but it is a steady stream that's been coming down at least for the last hour or so. Now, Berks County Department of Emergency Services says that streams and creeks are certainly going to flood. It's a certainty that they are concerned about. They are going back and forth looking at the weather models. They're anticipating for Berks County to get anywhere from one to three inches and then western parts of Berks to get three to five inches. Now that's what they're concerned about is that rain that's coming down because as we all know we've been getting rain uh, this whole month and there's really nowhere for it to go. I spoke to a woman earlier today who was walking down to check out Hay Creek. She says she's remembered it flooding in the past and it came up to her house and she had to spend the night at the fire department and she says she will never do that again. So right now she's actually heading to her sister's house and taking her car and making sure that she's okay and things aren't flooded out. And if you're traveling right now here in Berks County, it is raining, but the wind isn't a concern. So if you haven't, if you are in a flood, flooded area, an area that is prone to flooding, you should try to get to higher ground and you should be able to travel right now with not too much concern. Hay Creek right now is still within its banks, but it is going to be a concern overnight. And of course, they're concerned about when we've been saying that that story about what will happen if these trees come down and knock down power lines. So if you haven't gotten to a safe place right now, I, do, I know a lot of people or with family and friends already because this is Hurricane Irene has ruined people's plans for the weekend. Uh, but in some ways, it can be a reunion and a good way to get together. I know a lot of people are doing that right now. Now, if you are traveling, be prepared if you're heading west um, on the turnpike. The Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission is saying that they're anticipating to lower the speed limits because they are anticipating that a lot of people are going to be heading west trying to get away from the storm once it starts to pick up. So if you haven't already gone out, you want to get out now because they're going to lower the speed limit and they're anticipating traffic. I also spoke to BARDA tonight. They said that in Reading, as far as bus service is concerned, schedule is normal. They're keeping an eye on the storm, but they don't think it's going to affect anything and typically BARDA doesn't have service on Sundays anyway so they think most of their buses will be back safe by midnight and then because they don't run on on Sundays anyway they're not going to be running tomorrow so that's the information we have right now from Berks County reporting live in Birdsboro Pam Cunningham 69 news thank you we'll check in with you again and we also have you covered in Allentown. WFMZ's Will Lewis is standing by in the Little Lehigh for us tonight next to it I should say in Allentown. Will. Well, thanks a lot, Karen. You know, this is a place, Cedar Beach, where everybody comes to relax and have fun. But, you know, the only person having fun here at Cedar Beach is Hurricane Irene, or at least the starts of it. You know, the rain just started coming down, and just a few minutes ago, a really big dark cloud came over. It changed the scenery here. It got a little darker. And, you know, here at the Little Lehigh is known for flooding here in this area. The bridge right behind me is one that's usually underwater when the heavy rains come down. As a matter of fact, you can still see some sticks and everything else still stuck in the bridge from the last time 
the waters creep crept up that high. You know, there was only one party here. They were having a birthday party. They had some balloons and everything up, and I went over to talk to them. They wouldn't talk to us on camera, but they said, you know, they saw the rain starting, and they were like, we've got to get out of here. We know things are going to get bad. I can tell you right now, there's a lot of puddles that are starting to develop in the parking lot that we have here. There's some puddles developing on the other side of the little Lehigh over where the basketball courts are and everything else. Right now, Traffic seems fine going back and forth down by Cedar Beach, but, you know, the rains are just starting. The wind is starting to pick up a little bit. The trees are starting to rustle a little bit. So we're in for a lot of heavy rain coming down and right now. And, of course, we'll be going all over Allentown to check on a lot more areas that are prone to flooding during these heavy rain conditions. Right now, reporting live from Allentown at Cedar Beach Park, Will Lewis. 69 News. Well, that is, of course, uh, some of those outer bands that we're now starting to see. Let's also have you covered in Allentown. WFMC's Will Lewis is at the Little Lehigh again, this time on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in Allentown. And I see you put the foot up there, uh, Will. So do you have a little bit more rain out there now? <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Karen. I thought I was going to be brave and just go without the hood. But, you know, the rain, just like Pam said, is starting to be a little more steady. And like she said, it was light, then it was heavy. But now it's just a steady rainfall. But, you know, here at the Little Lehigh at Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, it's not that bad right now. You can see it's starting to move a little more swift. I can tell you, driving here from Cedar Beach to the area we're at right now, there wasn't a lot of traffic on the road. I think people are starting to pay attention of just staying inside and just just waiting to see what Hurricane Irene has for us. But I can tell you this, as you look up in the sky, the clouds are a lot darker. You can see them moving in. And like I say, the rain is just coming very steady. You know, as in Pam said, down in Berks, there's not a lot of wind here right now. But, you know, of course, more uh, bad weather and the heavy rain is to come. I can tell you this, when we were on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and at Lehigh Street, there was already some city barricades there at the corner. Now, we're not sure of what those barricades were for, you know, they could be for flooding. They could have been just left over by some city workers for something else. But I can tell you this, we aren't seeing a lot of people out here and there's not a lot of traffic, like I said, going up and down the roads because I think people have just realized that it might be time just to stay in. But of course, we're not going to stay in. We're going to keep going around Allentown and around other areas just to see how everything's going and to see if there's any water ponding on the roadways. I can tell you there were a few puddles coming back and forth, but, you know, we'll keep you updated on everything going on around the area. For now, reporting live in Allentown, Will Lewis, 69 News. Well, I know the two of us were chatting earlier. Uh, we didn't think that we'd be really doing hurricane coverage once we left the, Car uh, the Carolinas. They were both stationed down there at some point, uh, but now you're, uh, you're out in it again. I, I, yeah, Karen, you know, it, it's weird because, you know, it seems like Mother Nature has been dealing a couple blows here to Pennsylvania. You know, Tuesday it was the earthquake, and now we're talking about hurricanes. And, you know, you're right. I never thought that we'd be in this situation again, but, you know, the Mother Nature, she starts to do whatever she wants to do. And, of course, we're dealing with the hurricanes and we're dealing with the rains. And, you know, of course, we just want people to be safe. You know, I know we're out here and we're being as safe as we can, but we also want people to be safe as the weather starts to get a little worse. Sounds good. Uh, any idea where you're heading next? Uh, I don't know. I think we might uh, head over towards Whitehall. That's what we're that's what we're looking at right now and we'll see what uh, what the rains have over there. We're witnessing something historical. You and I, of course, are witnessing it from safe and sound. And here, we've got it, folks out in the midst of it right now. Yeah, we sure do. We have live team coverage for you this evening all around at Lehigh Valley and Brooks County. And tonight, we're going to start with WFNZ's Jackie Ferris. She is in Easton for us. Jackie, how is it out there? Well, the rain has been kind of spotty um, over the last half hour. It would rain really hard, then it would uh, let up a little bit, and then just hammer down uh, again like it is now. We have also, you know, Ed and Matt were talking about the gusts. We have started to see some gusts in between live shots. We're in this huge live truck and we'll be talking about, you know, what we're going to do for our next live hit and all of a sudden we'll feel like, uh, you know, one of the gusts hit the truck. So, you know, conditions, it, it seems, are, uh, 
are ramping up even if just slightly here in Easton. We've been uh, taking a look at uh, where the Lehigh and the Delaware meet. We're going to go ahead and, and show you what's going on. The waters are, are just really rushing and it the rain just keeps coming. We want to tell you Easton is prepared however in a couple of hours uh, road crews or street crews are going to go out and they're going to uh, be putting up some barricades around the city to keep people away from the trouble spots. Uh, the last couple of days they've been cleaning out inlets and they've been uh, making sure that the rain that uh, is going to be coming that four to six inches will be able to drain pretty good but uh, once those barricades go up I have to caution people please do not go around the barricades you know you may see a little bit of water and think it's just a puddle but uh, you know Pennsylvania is known for sinkholes and if you go around a barricade and you get caught in a sinkhole you know that's a, a big load of trouble and someone's going to have to come and rescue you and that person you know fire police emergency workers they are so busy right now trying to make sure that uh, everything is covered you don't want to put yourself in harm's way and you don't want to add another layer of danger to their jobs because let me tell you this is like the Super Bowl for emergency responders mayor Sal Panto says that he has been working with uh, county emergency management folks he's been talking to Easton Hospital and he's been talking to his own crews about exactly what needs to be done to make sure that everything goes smoothly and everyone uh, gets through Irene safely. Now as far as uh, what's going to happen from here, we're expecting flooding here at Easton. Well, we could see some overnight. The big news is going to be Monday and Tuesday once all of this uh, rain comes down and we get water from uh, New York as well. We could really see some uh, some extensive flooding, mostly uh, from the Lehigh itself. So when you see those barricades, just stay away until the barricades are removed. So from here, the rain keeps coming and we'll keep you posted. Karen? Stronger there now in Easton from the last time that we checked in with you, a little bit more steady. Yeah, it's been off and on, but it's really starting to pick up, I have to tell you. Jackie, is Jim. They pulled me out of the sports office. Uh, hey, Jim. Try to stay dry out there. Uh, did, you get to, did you get a sense for when the barricades will be going up? Did they give you a time frame in that regard? Well, Mayor Panto said that uh, a lot of the barricades were uh, stashed around the city along with uh, 180 uh, different uh, cones to uh, keep people away from, you know, trouble spots. But about 10 o'clock is what we were hearing and everything. And we have also been hearing that uh, this, the municipal parking garage for all of the city vehicles um, are have been moved so that in case they're needed, that they will be able to get out uh, expeditiously.